Hi everyone, it's Lisa. Today I'm going to talk with you about the Lemoyne Star. Here's a diagram of it. And the purpose of my video is to uh, show you where the bias is so that you can be mindful of it when you are making this beautiful, beautiful block. The very first thing to be aware of is where the middle of the block is. And I'm going to say that this might, this video might be a Captain Obvious video for anybody who's watching. Um, it was not obvious to me, but I'm a newer quilter and I had to diagram this stuff out and make sure that I understood it. And, um, and I saw a lot of people talking about bias, but not really, you know, explaining it fully. So this is kind of a, uh, an, an ad nauseum explanation of the bias in the block. The very first thing to do is show where the middle of the block is. So if you are working with this block and you're used to seeing the star in this orientation, really this is this is not the middle of the block. Okay, so it's it, it was it's easy then to get confused about that. At least it was for me. This is the middle of the block. And when we cut our diamonds, we're cutting our diamonds from strips of whatever width um, and length is prescribed for our pattern. And when we open our diamond pair up, whatever is on the left is the bottom fabric. Whatever is on the right is the top fabric. So when you're cutting your strips, make sure you don't get them turned about upside down. Keep the orientation, bottom fabric on the bottom top fabric on the top throughout. The other thing that's important to note is where the bias is and we have to evaluate bias in two places. First place is for our diamonds and the second place is for our insets. Let's talk about our diamonds first. Because we're cutting from strips, the top and the bottom of our strip are going to be straight of grain and that's pretty pretty self-explanatory but this is where it is here and here so it's a parallelogram Each one is going to be the opposite edge is going to be the same so if this is straight of grain that is straight of grain we're going to use yellow for caution for bias this is bias and this is bias and this is true for um, each of the pairs. So I'm just going to draw it because the same pair of, of um, try um, same pair of diamonds. I, still, I don't know why I want to call them triangles. Is going to rotate throughout the block, and this orientation does not change. All right. So. When this rotates over here, then this is bias and this is bias. So the beauty of sewing the um, insets together, the very first thing is you are controlling this middle bias. And I think, I think one of the reasons I was having difficulty with it is because when I was over handling it using some of the other methods, um, which is sewing this seam in a different order, I was getting stretched. So by containing, containing this bias on these individual diamonds in this way, I felt like I had better uh, better control over um, excuse me I had better control over the over the process so um, so that's something to keep in mind so when you're working with an in uh, a triangle inset let's um, diagram the bias here there is no bias on the outside. It's the long edge. It's a quarter square triangle or a side setting triangle. And by definition, it is straight of grain on the outside and bias on the inside. So you can see immediately the elegance of, of, of doing this is that you've got a bias against a straight of grain. 
bias against the straighter grain. This is a square, so a square has got what? Straight of grain on all four sides. So you don't need to be careful about handling your squares so much because they are straight of grain all the way around and they're not going to stretch. But you do need to be careful with this outside edge of this diamond because that is biased. Now this is um, going to rotate all the way around for us, but one of the things I'd like for you to notice is that when we're in the middle of this block, this is the middle, that we have straight of grain to straight of grain. So going ahead and, and putting all of that together, uh, it, although it does enclose those seams, um, you, you could work confidently with half the block. So let's say, for example, you put two pairs together, know that you're straight a grain on the bottom edge of, of that pair and of the half unit. And you can, you can work with that. So if you find working with a half unit easier, so for example, you have a half unit, you want to insert the um, quarter square triangle and then insert the um, square and this other um, quarter square triangle, you can do that very easily. And then you would put the two halves together and then do your pickup on the um, these two outside squares. Um, again, find a method that makes sense to you, but the point of my diagram is to show you, uh, you know, where your bias is and how you can exercise care in handling it. If you're going to cut with your regular ruler, what you'll need to do is get a ruler that has a uh, 45 degree uh, line on it so that you can match it up to make your diamond. And the way we do this, this is the 45 degree line. I'm putting it at, I've already cut a 45. You can do that any way you like using a triangle ruler or doing the same thing, placing um, the 45 degree line at the top of your strip and then making a cut and that gives you that. This is a two and a half inch strip. So I am going to want to find my two and a half inch line, which is right here and line that up. Now the reason I don't like to use this method very often is I like to also have a line of sight here, but this still works fine, so you don't have to buy a special ruler. And then you just make your cut. And if you have a marking tool, um, then this is uh, a good time for you to just quickly mark your diamond shoulder. I find my Marty Michelle diamond dimensions ruler uh, to be indispensable for making marks. So let's cut another diamond together. Oh, we have one here as I just did. This is the 135 degree angle, which is the angle of the diamond shoulder. And just, just put a pencil in there. And this will always keep your diamond uh, oriented so that you know if you get it twisted about, like if you do it this way, um, you will know that that is not what you want. This is the bias. This is the straight of grain. So if your if your mark on your shoulder is always at the top and at the shoulder, then you know that this is straight of grain. This is straight of grain bias bias. The other way, if you get surprised, is of course look at the cut. If the cut is going in line with the fabric, then you'll be all right. If you're looking at this cut you can see that the 
the grain is going that way. So those are other a couple of visual cues. But if you do it in such a way that you don't have to do extra fabric handling, then uh, you're you're in pretty good stead. So here we go again. Line up your 45 degree. Find your line here, which is two and a half. Make your cut. Have a sharp blade so that you are cutting and not pulling the material through and stretching it. And on these acute lines, that's particularly important. Make your mark. Now, uh, I have a specialty ruler, and I'll just show you that. It is an investment, but if you're making a lot of diamonds and stuff, and this is a beautiful instrument for your mitered borders as well. And it has a hole right here. And I have three visual points of interest to mark up my line. So I typically, uh, if I know my strip is exactly two and a half inches, I'm going to use lines interior to the ruler rather than the top. And I already have my two and a half inch marked. I know that this is two and a half inches, so I can see that line, that line, and that line. And what's good about this that you don't get on square rulers is that um, you, if your angle gets off on your cut, you can see that, and you can just make a clean cut. So it's a, it's a little easier. So if it's, you know, if you like to save time and like rulers and have a use for it, then make the investment um, for it. I make a lot of Lemoyne stars. Therefore, using a ruler such as this saves me time because I get very accurate results. Now, the other thing that you can do um, if you're a strip, if you're using a ruler such as this, I wouldn't recommend it for another ruler and you're, you know, OCD about accuracy and that sort of thing, then you can cut your strip a little bit uh, a little bit wider. This happens to be a two and a half inch strip, but let's say for example, I want it to be two and I would never oversize anything by a half of half uh, half an inch, but this is by way of exposition of the example. I always start with a 45 degree cut. And okay, if for if this is a this happens to be eight and a half inches. This ruler would be a lot better if they had dual, dual markings, so that if you're working from the top down, you've got <laughs> you've got something, but you got to do it in your head, and that's okay. So let's just say that we're going to do a two-inch diamond. So I would essentially bring my line down here, six and a half minus eight and a half is two, and then. I, I've got my point lined up here. I'm going to make this cut. And then I'm going to make this cut. And then make my mark. Now, on De Deb Tucker, some of Deb Tucker's rulers, she actually shows cuts that way. And, um, and it's just slightly over. It's just slightly over. But it allows you to not get hung up on the parallax of the edge of your ruler and look straight down on lines, which is much easier to see. And secondly, um, you again have have um, just a, a clean a clean cut there. So it's something to think about um, in the world of many things to think about. But the accuracy in cutting your diamonds. And always knowing where your bias is through your mark, your initial marking of your diamond, and making sure all these angles are excellent, and your diamond is exactly the size that it needs to be. So that's the very first step in making the Lemoyne star.